A few months after the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, all eyes are on her son. King Charles III hasn't had a coronation yet, so he's currently just keeping the monarchy going and possibly feuding with his son Harry and his wife Meghan. In this video, we're going to talk about the ways in which things will change once Charles begins his reign in earnest, as well as his current issues with his controversial son. The first and most obvious thing to note is that Elizabeth and Charles are donning the crown at different times. When Queen Elizabeth became Queen of England in 1952, the world was very different from how she had left it. At the time, she assumed control of a British empire that was smaller than it used to be, but still pretty large. She also presided over a period in which Britain, the rest of Europe, and the world were reeling from the after effects of the Second World War. The time when she became queen demanded a pretty active role from her as monarch. She personally visited many of the colonies she ruled and was involved in their internal affairs. In the decades that followed, the territories of the British Empire broke away from their imperial masters, and the queen also managed those changing relationships. Charles, meanwhile, sits on the throne at a time when a significant portion of the British public doesn't quite understand why he's there. Sure, around 67% of Britons agree that the monarchy shouldn't be abolished, but the royal family is seen as a largely ceremonial institution. The biggest supporters of the monarchy will tell you that their cheap contribution to the country is tourism, basically allowing people to visit their palaces. Charles could simply while away his time, contributing to philanthropic causes and just chilling at Buckingham if he wanted but he isn't that kind of guy. Moving on, Charles has proven to be a very different person from his mom. While the Queen is always engaged in the democratically elected parliament and its prime minister, she notably took a backseat to the country's affairs in her final decades. Part of the reason why people wonder why the monarch still exists is that Elizabeth refrained from intervening in a number of pretty pressing issues that the country was facing. For instance, she never voiced her opinion on the matter of Brexit, nor was her role in managing the COVID-19 pandemic all that apparent. Charles, meanwhile, had been voicing his opinion on his family and the people well before becoming the king. He's long advocated for the environment and action against climate change, which is good. Even more interesting is his view that the monarchy should defend the rights and views of people of all faiths. Even though the sovereigns is also the head of the Church of England, his views on alternative medicine, though, we can take or leave. It's clear that Charles is more forward-thinking than his mom, which isn't surprising since he grew up in a very different decade, but his policy priorities are ones that most British people, especially younger ones, can agree on. Charles has also reaffirmed his commitment to the younger members of British society by instituting various social programs designed to help them all before he became king. With all that in mind, here's what we think the reign of King Charles III will look like. If it sounds like Charles will start using the monarch's powers to put his thumb on the scale of British policy, that isn't likely to happen. He's expressed on many occasions the fact that his role as heir was always going to be more active than his role as king. In the latter position, Charles knows that trying to bring about a radical change in the country will likely alienate people and bring him into conflict with the elected government. But Charles still has a lot of soft influence and some strong opinions. Because of the high approval rating enjoyed by the monarchy, Parliament has always had to give consideration to the sovereign's views on how things should be done. Indeed, to this day, the monarch has always addressed the MPs as the state opening of Parliament, and that's where the Sovereign sets Parliament's agenda for the year, you can imagine that Charles would have some interesting ideas of what Parliament's agenda should be. Beyond that, Charles has also talked about slimming down the monarchy, which will reduce the operating costs of the royal family. A great deal of those costs are paid by taxpayer money, and we hope they could be redirected to public causes. Additionally, the family is certainly wealthy enough to fund causes that the King believes in, and we shouldn't be surprised if Charles expands his philanthropy. Coming up, there's there's only one thing that will hold Charles back. That, of course, is his reputation. Elizabeth was the daughter of King George VI, and the British people very well respected that guy. He was forced into the throne by his brother, who abdicated to be with his American lover. George, along with Winston Churchill, piloted the country and the empire through World War II, as well as granting independence and partition to India. Now, although Elizabeth had little in the way of ruling credentials, her dad's goodwill certainly helped her in the beginning. On the other hand, we have Charles. We've talked talked a bit about who the king is and what he was like in the years before he took the throne, but you probably didn't know any of that because Charles is primarily known for bombing his marriage with Princess Diana. 
Some people would argue that both of them did wrong to the other, but the general public has always blamed Charles for ruining the marriage. It doesn't help that his main affair partner, Camilla Bowles, is now the queen consort. If the royal family's approval rating is important for them to get things done, Charles will have to work to win over the British people, and he's gonna have to do it fast. He's the oldest king to ever ascend the throne. For Charles to implement his vision for the country, he'll have to move quickly and win over his peers and subjects. Let's move on to troubles at home, with Prince Harry and Meghan shunning their dad. There are reports that the pair, who's drummed up a lot of controversy in the family, will sit out the king's coronation in May. The coronation is going to be a pretty exclusive event, so why are they doing this? Well, their stated reason for missing out on the coronation is that the date, May 6, 2023, happens to be the fourth birthday of their son, Archie. It looks like the couple would rather celebrate Archie's birthday privately than attend the coronation on that day. If it sounds shocking to you, there's some recent precedent for this. Earlier this year, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations coincided with the first birthday of their daughter, Lilibet. The couple chose to skip the third night of Jubilee celebrations and instead celebrated their daughter's birthday at home. So while there's precedent, Harry and Meghan are the ones who said it, so it won't help them too much in the public perception. Of course, this can't really be why they're skipping out on royal celebrations, right? We've all seen the crown and know that the house of Windsor is capable of pettiness, but we think that Harry and Meghan have legitimate reasons for abstaining. This is probably just another symptom of rocky relations between the prince and the royal establishment. Finally, let's talk about Harry's rocky relationship with his family. Harry's issues with his dad and extended family are said to have begun with the death of his mom, Diana, in a car accident. In the years since then, he's come to grips with the fact that his dad and grandma played some role in the series of events that led to her death and it's definitely colored his relations with them. But of course, the real schism in the royal family was the so-called Megxit. Harry's marriage to Meghan Markle was a source of major controversy at the time, and it invited a lot of tabloid pressure on the newlywed couple. Harry supposedly pleaded with the staff at Buckingham to do something about it to no avail. Instead, that staff allegedly made racist remarks to Meghan. Essentially, Harry realized something that his mom once realized when she was his age, it's cold at Buckingham Palace. Amid these tensions, Harry and Meghan received word that they wouldn't be part of a future slimmed down monarchy. That totally sounds like Charles. During the Sandringham summit, the terms of the couple stepping back from the royal family were agreed upon, and with that, the two don't even live in the UK anymore. Harry and Meghan only attended these functions as formalities at this point and bounce as soon as possible. To be honest, we can relate. That's it for today's video, my friends. Let us know what you think the future of King Charles III will look like. Drop your takes in the comment section below, and while you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.